Raise your hand if your math students have ever looked at you at the end of a whole group lesson and said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Today, we're talking about those students. That's right, we're talking about struggling mathematicians and ways that you can support them through your math workshop. Let's get started. When we're struggling with mathematicians, it's really important to remember a few different things. First of all, what they're struggling with does not necessarily match what you're doing in your whole group lesson. So always really think about where is the struggle happening? Are we misunderstanding? Is there a misconception? Did you learn how to do this incorrectly in the past? Or maybe students are missing a big foundational skill that would help them find success with the skill you're working on. Another thing to consider with your struggling mathematicians is the fact that not all students will struggle in all areas of math. Math is very compartmentalized, so students can excel in multiplication and division and then really struggle with other mathematical skills, maybe such as graphing or working with polygons. It's important to remember that a student who's struggling at one point in math will find success other places and vice versa. Always be on the lookout for those struggling mathematicians. All right, you've identified the struggling students and you know what their weakness is. How are you going to help them? I think the past few years especially, it's been really overwhelming from a planning perspective to think about helping all these students and their diverse needs because I don't think anyone in education would say that the needs of our students haven't changed in the past two years. The needs of our students have drastically changed in the past two years, emotionally and mathematically. That means we have to be making really intentional decisions for all of our mathematicians every day, including those struggling students who are going to need that extra support from us. The first place you can support these students is in small groups. A differentiated small group can be incredibly powerful in your math class. In fact, we encourage the use of differentiated small groups for a few different reasons. Within a small group, you're working with fewer students at a time, which means you can really focus in on their needs. You want your small groups to be leveled by student ability, and you also want your small groups to change. Just like we already talked about, student need changes based on the math skill we're focusing on, that means students are gonna need different supports through your different math units. So you want those differentiated small groups to be really flexible. Now, you'll hear that word differentiated quite a bit in the math world. This means that each of your small groups very well could be working on a completely different skill to meet their needs. Just because we're all doing multiplication in whole group doesn't mean we're all ready for multiplication in small group, and that's okay change what your small groups are working on to meet those student needs. Another reason why small groups can be so powerful is because it's an opportunity to reinforce that whole group lesson. Think about your students and think about where they are mathematically. You're typically going to end up with an I'm not ready, I'm ready but I need support, and then I've already got it. Give me a quick review and push me on ahead. Small group gives you the chances to really meet all of those students' needs within the context of the skill you're working on in whole group. Another reason that I love small group for my struggling mathematicians is because it is the best place to get their hands onto the math. Differentiating with manipulatives is so powerful, especially for our struggling mathematicians who really need to see the math before they can conceptualize independently. By using your math manipulatives only in small group, it gives you a lot more control of student action while they're working. You can make sure they're using the manipulatives correctly and you can support them in their continued math work. A few tools that I really love that I keep at my table year round. These are like snack containers that I love, 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 love to fill with teeny tiny erasers. We can get these guys on Amazon, but I get mine at the Target dollar spot, and I have more than I would like to admit. These stay at my small group table year round because it's amazing what you can do with this tiny little manipulative. Another great example of a manipulative that's great to use in small group but exhausting to use whole group, things like fraction tiles. 
By using your fraction tiles at your small group table, you're not having to listen to 25 students sending their fraction tiles flying off their desks. Another way you can support your struggling mathematicians is with the center work that they are doing. We know that students need really independent and really important tasks to work on when they're not at your small group table. What's the point of having them do work if it's not valuable work that's helping them grow? A few ways you can really make sure those struggling students are gonna be successful during this independent time is first of all, make sure they understand the task. That's why I like to use really repetitive centers with my students. The not so wimpy teacher math centers are some of my favorites and I like that they're really similarly structured. This means I'm not losing instructional time explaining centers to students every week and my students are really comfortable with the expectations of the standards. They know what they are expected to do, therefore it's more likely that they're going to be successful working in the center. You also want to make sure that you are spiraling skills through your center work. This spiral means that students are gonna to continue to see and practice skills over and over again throughout the year. This is hugely important, especially as we get into those high stakes testing grades because I don't know about you, but I teach multiplication at the very beginning of the school year, and then they're expected to multiply fluently on my assessment at the end of April. So that's a long time to not touch multiplication again. By spiraling your centers, you're helping all of your students continue to build those muscles associated with that math skill. Another great way to help those struggling students is the use of technology you know that it is 10 times more interesting on a computer or an iPad than it is coming out of your mouth. My students will do anything if it's on the computer. So use those tech tools during that center time to continue to help those students who need that extra practice. Websites such as iXL, Reflex, MobyMax, Dreambox are fantastic resources for math practice. And I use all of them because each one is really individualized to meet students' needs. Some of them you can assign specific skills, which is great for practice that matches your whole group lesson, but it's so nice to have a program where students just sign right in and it immediately is giving them skills they need to practice to build on their weaknesses in the math classroom. Use that technology really well to support your mathematicians. It's also important that we're using our math workshop to build our fact fluency with our students. And I know a lot of times we hear fact fluency and we think multiplication facts. That's really quick and obvious, especially to those that hang out in third grade all day where multiplication is a huge chunk of our math work for the year. However, I consider fact fluency any mathematics skills that you want your students to become very fluent at throughout the school year. While multiplication fluency is great, if you don't have addition and subtraction fluency within like one through 20, it's gonna make a lot of our math skills very slow and very tedious. I also want my students to be fluent skip counters and I want my students to be fluent when it comes to working in a hundreds chart. I want my students to be fluent when it comes to reading a clock. So narrow down those skills that you think are truly foundational in terms of our math work and start incorporating activities that give students the chance to practice building the fluency for those skills. Again, centers is a fantastic time during that math workshop for students to be practicing those fact fluent skills they're going to need to be successful. Seeing our students struggle is hard. It's hard on us and it's hard on the students themselves. Luckily, our students are being supported by amazing educators who want them to succeed and are willing to do what it takes. I hope that we've given you some great tips to help you improve what's happening in your math workshop to meet those student needs. If you want more tips, guidance, suggestions, and support, we do have a brand new Not So Whippy Teacher Math Masterclass, and this is a phenomenal class to help you grow in your math instruction. Now, we have two options. Option number one, the master class is not open yet, but there is a wait list. If you get on the wait list, that means you're gonna be the first to know when the course is open and you're gonna get a discount for the course by already being on that wait list. Okay, option number two, the course is open and we are celebrating. 
this card is going to take you to the course sign up. Both of them are also going to be linked down in the description box. I'll be there. I hope I see you too. Thank you so much for joining me today. We know our mathematicians need us and we know what it takes to support those struggling students and help those students who are already finding success in the classroom because that's what this is all about, making sure all of our students are finding success for themselves in the math classroom. All right, let me know down in the comments what is one thing you are looking forward to trying in your math workshop to help those struggling students or let me know if you have any other questions. We also have an entire math playlist here on YouTube full of advice, suggestions, tips, and some fun. Don't forget about the Not So Wimpy Teacher Math Masterclass. And as always, I hope you guys have a not so wimpy day. Bye.